I, my name is Val Aylens, and I'm, I'm from North Dakota. I've been here nine years. We have a uh, 121 acre farm here called Blue Harbor Plantation, which is about uh, 15,000 square feet of hydroponic greenhouse, six acres of orchard, and about 3,000 uh, flower plants that we grow for cut flowers. Jen and I came down here on a fact finding mission about 10 years ago, saw no good produce in the, in the stores and went around and talked to some of the hotels and resorts. Rotan was growing and, and, uh, and uh, we decided to come down here and, and, and do hydroponics. I'd never done it before, but I thought, geez, you know, I'm a PhD in ag, I know soil chemistry, I know plant physiology, this should be pretty easy to figure out, this hydroponics. Now, well, I also thought because I was a skier and a sailor, I could learn to windsurf on my first day. That didn't work either. But I thought I could just get all this information here on, on how to do this. Well, hardly anybody does hydroponics in the hot, humid tropics. They do it in the hot and dry, like Israel or the Mideast or Australia or someplace. But where it's hot and humid, right by the sea, it's really, really hard to do. So only, almost nobody does it. Those who do do it don't share their information. So we've just learned kind of by trial and error, and uh, it took us about four years to figure out, but we've been nine years here now, so uh, things are going pretty well now. We used Hydroponics is very profitable once you have the systems figured out, but it's very cost-intensive to set up. All we monitor daily in the, uh, in the water down there is pH and electrical conductivity. We're doing other things to the water, we're aerating it, we're chilling it, but um, we start off with reverse osmosis water. Because of our proximity to the sea, we do have sodium in our soils here. Even though our water, is, our well water is very high quality, it comes up out of the ground at about 30 parts per million sodium. That is the lower level of toxicity for lettuce. Lettuce is very, very sensitive to sodium. So we are all, all our water, and uh, it, which is really nice for a hydroponic operation. That means I'm starting off with nothing in the water. It's, it's pure water. Then I add my, my fertilizer solutions, um, and which, which are just in the right proportion uh, as, as to the requirements of lettuce. Yeah. It's a very, very efficient way, water, water use efficiency, fertilizer use efficiency, uh, labor use. It's a very efficient way to produce things that can't be produced um, any other way except hydroponics. Uh, we have terrible soils on this island, but it's not even the soil so much. It's the, uh, um, when it's very hot and humid dur during our rainy season, the diseases and pest pressures we get are, are just tremendous here. So, and then when it gets hot in the summer, it really gets bloody hot. So it's just not a great agricultural place. Less than 1% of the land, I believe, is zoned agricultural on the island. It's either too steep or too gravelly or sandy. You know, it's mainly lettuce, six different varieties of lettuce. That's what we grow at this time of year. Uh, you're looking at about 60,000 heads of lettuce here. And this is about a third of an acre, about 15,000 square feet. The system that you're looking at right now for the lettuce is called NFT, Nutrient Film Technique. What we have is just a thin film of water. It's only about a millimeter thick. That's coming in what we call the input or the manifold end. You see the two little hoses. The water's coming out of our nutrient tank in the corner, coming in this end, going down a 2.5% slope into a drain then back to the nutrient tank where it's re-chilled and, and retreated. Once it hits 100 degrees here this afternoon in the greenhouse, it's probably about 92 or 3 right now, these plants will live about 30 minutes without water. And it's about fifty dollars or $60,000 worth of plants you're looking at. So of course, there's a generator back in the bodega or the barn there that comes on immediately. Now unfortunately, I even have a backup to the backup, but that's down now. And our grid power is so bad right now that uh, uh, when it goes off today, and it will sometime, if my generator doesn't come on, I'm in a world of hurt. Two times we've had virtually that whole village you pass through where we're going to in just an hour. We've had them down here throwing uh, water down the gullies by hand while we worked on the generator. But it, uh, um, we're always on, farmers are always on the edge anyway. 
And so are hydroponic farmers. Hydroponic farms in the third world are really on the edge, are really on the edge. We harvest every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning uh, all year long. It doesn't matter if it's uh, cold and rainy or hot and sunny, our clients are open. Our clients are the restaurants, resorts, uh, hotels, but the supermarkets also. We, we do bags of mix like you can buy in the States and we sell those uh, to the people who live here in the supermarkets. So the Hondurans themselves are starting to get uh, to eat salads and uh, especially the black population has a lot of diabetes so their doctors have them on diet. So we can't put our lettuce up at five dollars a bag even though we could sell it then the local people wouldn't get it. And if I was just a gringo down here trying to make money that's probably what I do but as I've told you I worked my whole life overseas and we're here to, to serve the local people as well as, as not just not just the tourists. So 